Hey guys, I'm Matt, a developer from Ohio. In this video, I'll be walking you through the Lovely Love Seats project. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with variables, values, and the print statement. Let's get started. In this project, we'll store the prices and descriptions of three furniture items. Then, we'll use those variables to total up customers' orders and print out receipts. We'll start by saving information about the furniture items. First is the Lovely Love Seat. We'll create a new variable for this item's description, which will give a descriptive name like Lovely Love Seat Description. So I'll just type that in, lovely love seat description. The variable will be set to the string shown in this task's instruction. To assign a value to a variable, we need to use the assignment operator, which is just a single equal sign. We can copy the string and paste it as the value of lovely love seat description. Remember that a value needs to be surrounded by quotation marks in order for Python to interpret it as a string. So we'll add the quotation marks and inside of that, paste in the string. Along with the description, we'll save the price. Again, we'll use the descriptive name, the assignment operator, and then the number provided in this task's instruction. So it'll be lovely love seat price equals 254. Note that quotation marks are only needed for strings. A numerical value should have nothing surrounding it. The second item is the stylish settee. Just like with the lovely love seat, this item needs a description and price. Starting with a description, we'll give the variable a descriptive name, use the assignment operator, and then copy and paste the string inside of quotation marks. So that'll be stylish settee description equal to quotation marks, and then we will copy and paste in the string. The same goes for this item's price, descriptive name, assignment operator, value. So stylish settee price equals 180.50. Note that our variable names are not only descriptive, but consistent. They follow the pattern of item name, item attribute. Consistent naming conventions make your code more readable and easier to use. The last item is luxurious lamp. We'll use the same format as the previous two items. First is the description. So luxurious lamp description equals quotation marks and then the string. Then we'll add the price. Luxurious lamp price equals, and then the price. The last value we need to save is the sales tax, which will be a percentage of the total price that gets added on at the end of the transaction. In the case of this furniture store, it's 8.8%. Remember that 100% is one, so 8.8% will be 0 0.088. So we'll save sales tax to be 0 0.088. Sales tax was the last value we needed to save permanently, but we can also use variables to hold on to values that change over time. For example, when a customer is shopping, his total will go up every time he adds an item. Let's create a new variable for the total cost of a customer's order. We'll call it customer one total because we want to be able to handle multiple customers. We'll set it to zero, then add the price of each item as we go. So that'll be customer one total set to zero. We also want this customer's receipt to print out the description for each item he buys. We'll call this customer one itemization. Like the total, we'll set it to nothing, then add on to it later. However, the string version of nothing is not zero, it's what we call an empty string, which is quotation marks with no text inside. So customer one itemization is going to be equal to an empty string. Customer one wants to buy the lovely love seat, so we'll add the price of that item to his total. Instead of the assignment operator, we'll use the addition operator. It's easy to remember because it's just a plus sign in front of the standard assignment operator. The addition operator won't completely overwrite customer one total with a new value, but rather add the new value to the existing value of customer one total. So we'll type in customer one total, and then we'll use the addition operator. Remember that we saved the price of lovely love seat all the way back in task two. This is why we did that. Now we can just write lovely love seat price instead of looking up that number. So we'll add here lovely love seat price. Also, the consistent naming conventions that we followed mean that we didn't have to go back through the code to figure out the name of this variable. We knew that it would start with the item's name, lovely love seat, and end with the attribute, price. Now, we'll add on the description to customer one itemization. Fortunately, we can use the addition operator for strings too. That's why we started with an empty string in task nine. This line will be just like the last. All we need to do is change total to itemization and price to description. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line and we're going to change price to description, and we're going to change total to itemization. 
Customer 1 also wants to buy a luxurious lamp. No problem. Because we're using the addition operator, we'll just trade out lovely love seat for luxurious lamp. So I'm going to paste this line in, which I have here on line 15, and we're going to change lovely love seat to luxurious lamp. And now we're adding the price of luxurious lamp to customer one's total. The same goes for itemization. We'll use customer one's itemization on the left side of the operator and luxurious lamp's description on the right side. So again, I'm just going to paste in this line that I have saved here, and I'm going to change lovely love seat to luxurious lamp. With both items added to customer one's order, we just need to add on the sales tax. Remember that the tax is a percentage of the total price, so we'll save customer one tax as the total times the tax rate. So customer one tax is going to be equal to customer one total times the tax rate, which we saved earlier as sales tax. With the tax saved, we'll add it to the total with an addition operator. So customer one total plus equals the customer one tax. So we're getting the tax using the percentage, and then we're adding it on to the total. And that is customer one's order completed. We started with zero, then added the price of each item, and applied the sales tax to arrive at the final price. We can finally print out the receipt. We'll start with a line that specifies what's about to be printed. Inside a print statement, we'll write customer one items. So we'll print customer one items. If you save and run your program, you should see the string customer one items appear in the console. Below that first line, we'll print out the item descriptions that we collected in the customer one itemization variable. So we'll print customer one itemization. We'll do the same for the total price. First, a line telling the user what the next value means. So I'm going to paste in this line, and I'm just going to change items to total. So this will say customer one total. Then we'll print out the actual total. So I'll paste this in, and we'll change itemization to total. With these print statements, you should be able to see the finished receipt for customer one. We have the items with each description listed, and then the total with the price, which is somewhere around $333. We're going to add a second transaction in receipt. This will mostly be the same as the previous transaction, except that we'll deal with customer two, and this customer will be purchasing different items. I'm going to go through this one a bit faster than we did with customer one. First, we'll start the total at zero. Customer two total starts at zero. We'll also start the itemization at nothing. Remember that nothing for a string means an empty string. So customer two itemization equals an empty string. Customer two is buying the stylish settee. So we'll add the price of that to customer two total. Customer two total plus equals Stylish settee price. We'll also add the description of stylish settee to customer two itemization. So customer two itemization plus equals stylish settee description. This customer is also buying a luxurious lamp. So we'll add the price by pasting this in and changing the item to luxurious lamp. Then the description. Again, we'll paste this in and we'll change the item to luxurious lamp. We'll calculate the sales tax for this customer by multiplying the total amount by the tax rate. So customer two tax is going to be equal to customer two total times the sales tax. Lastly, we'll apply the tax to the total with an addition operator. So customer two total is going to have customer two tax added onto it the receipt. We'll print customer two items to indicate what will follow. So we'll print the string customer two items. Then we'll print the itemization. So we'll print customer two itemization. We'll print a string to introduce the total price, which will be the same as customer two items, except it'll say customer two total. And finally, we will print the price itself, customer two total. That's it. In the console, you should see the receipts for both customer one and customer two. In this project, we saved attributes of furniture items as a catalog, then added up those attributes to form customers' orders. We handled the differences between strings and numbers, used both the assignment and addition operators, and printed out the results. Creating, updating, and using variables is key to managing information in any program, Python or otherwise. I'm Matt for Codecademy. 
happy coding.